Hello, I'm a motoring journalist and here I am on the launch of the Volvo V60 plug-in hybrid. Now in the normal course of events I would have read the press kit, I would have made some notes, I would have scripted something so what you would see would be reasonably articulate and cogent and there'd be lots of nice shots of the car driving up and down instead of which I've been driving the thing all day, I haven't had a chance to stop um, and as a result of which I've got about 40 minutes before it gets dark and I've got to make this thing on the fly so if the quality control is less than Fellini that's why but I haven't even got a light with me and it's actually much darker than when I started um, just adds to the general sense of professionalism doesn't it fortunately this v60 has a vanity mirror over the driver with two lights on either side a bit like a sort of makeup artists whatnot so if you'll excuse the top of my head being cut off um, it does at least mean that you can vaguely see me which is a mixed blessing I realize anyway let's let's start it all right now it has three modes something called pure which means it will run only on electric drive uh, something called hybrid which means it'll either work with a diesel engine or with the electric motor or a bit of both or power after christening a button pure it would have been fun if they called this one filth anyway they haven't but press it and the 2.4 litre turbo diesel and 70 horsepower electric motor work together hurling the car to 62 in 6.1 seconds and it's capable of an eco-friendly 143 miles an hour. The plug-in bit means the car can be recharged from the national grid and takes about three and a half hours from a charging post or less than an hour for a get you home boost and it's seven and a half hours from a three pin socket. So anyway I'm going to go and drive this thing so I can, I can talk in a banal way to you about what it does. Uh, once I've worked out how to take... Oh, no, the handbrake's come off, that's good. It is technically very clever. There's a large battery uh, in the boot underneath where you store your luggage, which does actually pinch some of the luggage space. Um, and there's an electric motor which drives the rear wheels. And one thing I forgot to mention in my, my rather desperate introduction was that this is a four-wheel drive car. Um, not like a sort of Land Rover, not designed to go off-road, but it's, it, the intention is to give you some extra traction. And there's a lot of clever technology which is designed to mean that the thing can switch from one power source to the other. And it actually does this really smoothly. Um, to such an extent that most of the time you really can't tell there isn't any jerking about when it goes from one to the other. As for efficiency, Volvo claims a superb CO2 figure of 48 grams per kilometer and a gobsmacking 155 miles a gallon, which must be theoretically possible, although cars on our Scottish test route were averaging mid-40s mpg, a figure beaten by many conventional diesels. It should also cover up to 31 miles in electric mode unless you start using things like wipers and lights when it will be a lot less. This is undoubtedly a good car, cleverly engineered, stuffed with ingenious design and safety kit, which is potentially impressively efficient. But there are caveats. The lithium iron battery has a claimed 15 year life, but the rest of the car could be around for quite a lot longer. And even with a 5,000 pound government green car grant, it costs almost 43,000 quid. But if you like it and can afford it, it's the world's first diesel plug-in hybrid, so currently there's nothing else quite like it, even in the dark.